Kaneen in the corner. Her third from outside. Zone. Shot, it's good! That's been all. Pulls up, knocks it down! Boys basketball on tap here at Diamond Regional tonight, our first of two boys games this work week. The Bengals hosting the Bristol Plymouth Craftsmen here at the James T. Ashley Gymnasium. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to the court. They are warming up behind us. We're just about ready for game time here at Diamond. We saw the Bengals last week. Tough loss for them against the Rams from Upper Cape. Came in really strong and put on a strong show. Their size was a lot for Diamond to handle in that game. Now you come into tonight, another conference game for the Bengals, and the Craftsmen come in having won the first matchup between these two schools. It was a tight game. Coach Tim Plant of the Craftsmen telling me just a couple moments ago that, like many of the coaches we've talked to this year, trying to generate offense via defense seems to be a common theme. The game is changing right before our eyes, and we've heard that from a number of teams throughout the 2023-24 season. Had a chance to talk with head coach Tom Labrera as well pregame here, and he said he liked how the team looked against the Rams, but definitely was an off night in terms of shooting as well, and their size was difficult to deal with. Very tough defensively, blocking a lot of shots. So tonight, a little more even keel, a more balanced opponent for Diamond. And as I said, the first matchup was pretty close between these two schools. So looking forward to it. We hope to stick around. Live coverage right after the break. Hi, I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I'm a member of the Community Preservation Committee and the Historical Commission. Welcome to the Lafayette Durfee House. I'm David Jennings, curator. Built in 1750, this is one of the best living history representations in Massachusetts. Judge Thomas Durfee, the original owner, was also an admired patriot. Judge Durfee made sizable purchases of equipment and weapons to outfit Revolutionary War soldiers, including his own son. Generals and Minutemen frequently met here for secret and strategic military planning. But by the 1970s, the home's significance was largely forgotten and it was slated for demolition. Preservationists rallied, first to fund the restoration and secondly to resurrect interest in the heroic Durfee family. The original frame and foundation are intact. Craftsmen work tediously to repair or replace decorative elements. Visitors are encouraged to handle artifacts and work alongside artists. The Lafayette Durfee House is included in the National Register of Historic Buildings and exceeds standards of the Secretary of the Interior. However, time continuously ravages the one-of-a-kind structure. Grants from the Community Preservation Committee, as well as monetary contributions, spearhead the efforts of tireless volunteers. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Game time here at Diamond Regional Boys Basketball, our second straight boys game here at the James T. Ashley Gymnasium. And uh, our last of the regular season, you know, we've talked about it on multiple broadcasts this year that uh, the, the schedules have been a little bit weird, a little um, unbalanced, I think might be a good way to, to put it, where we're seeing teams in bunches here in the winter season. And um, I mean, personally, when, when you're following a team, uh, multiple teams, I should say, uh, I don't personally like that, but you know, it is what it is. I, I don't envy uh, Bobby Bailey with him having to make the schedule, nor Brad Buston making the schedule over at Durfee. So it is what it is. Um, but, but my point in saying that is, you know, you don't, it's hard when you're not seeing a team say, in thirds or quarters, because we try to do four games or so, three to four per per team, um, as best as we can. And uh, so I try to get a game early in December. I try to get you know January early after the break, 
than early February and then last week or so of the season. That's, that's the goal, you know, so balance. And unfortunately, we just don't always get that. And this is one of those seasons. Uh, to give you a good example, Durfee girls, um, I had, I visited and, and was at four games in two weeks. Um, <laughs> You know, that's that's really not a good balance there either. And we're going to see them only one more time now in, in the last mm, two and a half weeks. Durfee boys I haven't seen since about three weeks ago. Um, but I'm going to have three games for them down the stretch because we only had one other game. Um, it's just the way it goes. It's just it's, it's sometimes it doesn't always pan out exactly how, you know, we would like it to in terms of, you know, for us to do high school coverage, but oh well, as they say. We, we roll with it and do the best we can. Um, so that's why this game, a little bunched up. We'll see your Diamond Girls one more time as well. Their senior night on uh, the 14th. Perry, 0 for 2. That one dribbles out. So the foul, not costly. Our first foul of the night coming against um, Isiku. Diamond in their home white uniforms. BP wearing their powder blues. We were joking beforehand during JV. They're wearing the same, they have the same uh, uniforms. It kind of reminds me of the Kansas City Royals a little bit from, <laughs> from Major League Baseball. Um, but sharp, a color we don't normally see in this area. So it's actually kind of nice to have a different look. With that, we'll run down the starters as we uh, re-inbound the ball here. Number three, for the craftsman, number three, Dante Morris. Number four, Gregory Isiku. Number 12, Ryan Donovan. Number 23, Owen Hale. And number 24, Zach Branco. Uh, head coach for the craftsman is Tim Plant. Uh, familiar face here in the South Coast. Now with the craftsman. Nice to see him again, chat with him pregame. Craftsman coming in at five and seven, middle of the pack here, you know, below 500, kind of like Diamond. You know, this is a big game for Diamond, really. They need a fifth win badly here down the stretch. And uh, this was a close matchup, as I said in the intros the first time. So I expect it to be pretty close tonight as well. On paper, that's what you would expect. That one no good, shot clock violation and it is BP ball. Starters for Coach Tom Labrera's Bengals. Number one, Sakai Silver. Number four, Sayer Neal. Number five, Sam Perry, who led the team in scoring last week when we were here for the game against the Rams. That's for three from Morris. Perry had 12 in that game uh, when we were here a week ago. That one pops straight up, rebound goes to Aiden Bigelow, the third starter, the fourth starter rather for the Bengals tonight. And the fifth starter, Anthony DeJesus, number 24. Neal kicks it out to Silver. Back to Neal, good stretch, it was deflected and a foul, it appears, coming here. Oh no, my bad, out of bounds it went on the turnover. Diamond at four and eight, so um, as I said, they, they desperately could use a W here, uh, especially given that it's conference play. But uh, falling behind here in the early minutes after hitting that first basket on the first possession, seven straight points for the Craftsman. That's for three, and that's no good. Hard off the back of the rim, kick straight up. Neal trying for the rebound with Isiku and not able to corral it. Before it went out of bounds, Diamond will keep the ball. Bad inbounding pass. And Morris down the court, and he is fouled. Two shots coming, Bigelow picking up Diamond's first. And a pair of free throws for Morris, first time for him. Both made, and a 9-0 run for the Craftsman here in the first three minutes. Yeah. 
That one tipped. And a whistle from behind. Ooh, a double dribble. A turnover. Ian Campbell Morales, number 12, coming in right there on your screen as he gets the inbound pass. Now to Perry. To Jesus will get it to roll down and that'll stop a 9-0 run. And he's got both field goals for Diamond here in the first. Hard pass down baseline. Hop, skip, and a jump. No shot. A foul called before the shot. Hmm. Throw a couple steps there, too. Thought maybe we were going to get a travel, but calling it a move. Inbound to Donovan. Now corner for three. Well short. Branco put that up. Perry calling for the pass down low. But Silver not looking that way. He went to his right to Campbell Morales. Wants a long three, and that is had the distance, but not the accuracy that time. Left of the, ba of the basket. Three on this side for Morris. The rebound from Branco. Kicks it out to Iseku. And now Morris with it again. That was a very high three he had put up. Almost hit the rafters. Jumpers good from Donovan. And another field goal for BP. They are hitting some shots early. That was something Diamond struggled with in last week's game against the Rams. In that fourth quarter in particular, just two from the field, and that's it. So it was a tough, tough go of it down the stretch there. And, and in that fourth quarter, on the other side of things, the Rams put up quite a few points as well. It was their uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 points in that fourth quarter to, you know, to Diamond. Diamond put up nine, but from the field struggled badly. Tipped. Nice stretch there from Carton Pereira. Carter Pereira, excuse me. Basket for Craftsman on the other end. And it's 11 to 6. Excuse me, 13 to 6. Good take. I said Pereira, my, my bad there, by the way. I was looking at the wrong, wrong side here. That was a Braden Ehrlichman, number 34 for the Craftsman, who had the basket two shots ago. And a foul, Diamond's third. Foul against Pereira. And Isiku missing the first free throw. Wow, long three from way out. And another one that had the distance, just not, not hitting the basket, though. Morris 
Has room on the right side. Tough shot and he's fouled. It's gonna be DeJesus picking up number two and Diamond's fourth. With exactly two minutes to go in this first quarter. Morris at the line for the second time. It was two for two in that first trip. That one will miss. And DeJesus coming out. As Sam Perry checks back in. Bolts free throws miss that time, but the height there from Branco gets it back for the Craftsmen. They'll have a fresh clock here. Morris wants three, and he got it. Again, very high. Oh, it's a rainbow type of shot right there, close to the rafters. Very unique, taken away. He was ready for that, Morris. And he's got five straight for Diamond, or for BP rather, excuse me. Diamond has allowed seven straight, 19 to six. Ten points for Morris already, only in the first quarter. Bengals need a basket and they get it. Jack Labrera with the layup off the glass. Oh, tough shot, falling away. Loose ball, Diamond slow to it. Isiku takes it, off balance, kind of pirouettes, tries to put up, can't not do so. Diamond takes it back. 40 seconds to play in the first. Open shot to the left there. They went to Labrera now around the horn and going for three was Pereira, that's no good. And now the shot clock off and BP with the ball, 30 seconds. Pressure there from Pereira. Height versus height. Oh boy. Diamond's fifth. Second for Pereira. And a miss on the first from Branco, his first trip to the line. Diamond will get the ball with 9.9 uh, .9 seconds after this shot. One for two. And it's a 20 point first quarter for the Craftsman. Diamond's got to get it in. High pass, deep pass. Three seconds. Oh, that was close to a travel. Desperation shot at the buzzer is no good. And BP showing up in the first. Up by 12, 20 points from the Craftsman after eight minutes of game time. Mm. 
And mind you, Diamond scored the first basket of the game. And BP went on that 9-0 run to you know, start building that lead. That happened within the first three minutes. That was, it happened fast. But Morris, how about Morris for the Craftsman? 10 points in the first. <laughs> Bengals will start with possession here in the second. Got to get some offense going, generate some shots, get a bit of a rhythm. One thing really picking up on here after, you know, after one quarter, BP incredibly quick to the ball. Whoever Diamond gets it to, someone's standing right there. And they lose possession here in the first possession of the second. So a turnover for Diamond as that one goes out of bounds. You know, Diamond's playing some pretty tight defense too, but threw the ball away. Morris is fouled, and Diamond picks up their first foul here in the second. Campbell Morales picking up his first foul of the night as Morris adds to his totals here. Free throw made. Two for two that trip. Coach Plant said, look for his team to play fast and to press defensively, and we're seeing that for sure. I was about to say before the foul is that, you know, for Diamond, they're not playing bad defense. It's just that BP's hitting the shots. That That's... A big part of it as well. No good. Trying to find the lane, nice spin move. And Caden Dias, on a tough take to the basket, draws the foul as well. Fouls against Donovan, his first. BP's first. And the basket does not go. The rebound goes to Branco. Bigelow trying to draw that loose, unable. Steps back for three and knocks it down. Donovan shifted over. BP up 15. That's for three. Perry answers on the other side. Block from Bigelow. Perry Theater, reel it in. Tough shot, won't go. Loose ball, Diamond will get it back. It's Dias. Oh, Perry wanted to go for another three. Gonna pass to the big guy down low. Lots of contact, that's gonna be on the floor. No shot. Six 
Second foul for BP, second for Isiku, and a timeout called by Coach Plant of the Craftsman. This, the first game was just a two point win for the Craftsman, high scoring game. Uh, about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, January 12th, Diamond heading out to Taunton. They lost 68 to 66. That's a heck of a game. Um, they've had a couple games like that, uh, BP has. They beat Tri-County last Wednesday, 67-65, another very close game. Uh, but they've been playing some good ball of late. They've won uh, four of the last seven and that's before dropping the first four of the season. Or that's after, I should say, dropping the first four of the season. So uh, BP trying to you know, finish the season strong. Tonight's road game here, uh, the first of three this week. They're going to Shawsheen Valley tomorrow, and then Friday they go to Case before finally returning home next Wednesday, the 7th. Three is long and no good. Jace Pixoto just checked in, picking up Diamond's second foul, and it's going to put Isiku at the line again. Two for two. Batted away. The pass from Pixoto. Looked like he was trying to go back to uh, Alexis Gonzalez. Gonzalez we saw in JV had Played quite a bit in JV, getting some minutes here in varsity. Number 25, that is. Long three there uh, from the corner, deep in the corner. Rebound goes to Isiku. After the miss from Branco, gets the pass. Beautiful pass. Isiku was breaking baseline. They found him. Perry, quick release three, that's in and out. The rebound to pick Soto, tough shot, but a travel called before the shot. So arm step back there. Silver and Pereira coming back in for Diamond. Donovan gets a screen, takes the shot. And it won't go. It skips over the front of the rim and off the side. Perry waits. Oh, and it's fouled on the shot. And I'll tell you, patience there drew that foul. Two shots coming for Perry on BP's third foul. Perry went to the line in the first, missed both. It's the second foul against Donovan, both coming here in the second. Free throw is good from Perry. This time both are good. Perry now two for four on the night from the line. Five points total. Travel against Morris. Doesn't like the call.
Foul against the Craftsman again. This time Morris. It's his second. Four for the Craftsman with 3.16 to play in the half. One more and Diamond will be at the line the rest of the way. That's for three and it's good on the far side for Perry. Perry thinks to a pair of threes. Eight points here in the second. Eight of Diamond's ten. The other two coming from Dias on the field goal and one. That missed. Nice pass down to Sayer Neal. Rebound from Pereira is good. And just like that, it's a nine point game. Diamond battling back. Seven straight for the Bengals. Diamond now will pick up their third foul. And it's the first against Neal. Couple free throws for Perry, the three ball from Perry, and then that last field goal there from Pereira has gotten Diamond back to within three possessions. Donovan, nice move, tough shot. Quick pass in, they go to Perry, Silver does. We'll go back to Silver now. High pass reeled in by Pereira. He'll hold on to it. Now they're going to go to Neal. Neal wanted to hit the three. Loses the ball out of bounds. Diamond will put it back in with 20 seconds. 20 on the shot clock. Silver will inbound once again. He'll go to Neal. Open. Goes for three. It's wide right. Two on one now. That's a tough foul. Saw the hand right on the ball. It's good defense from Silver. Diamond's fourth. And two free throws coming now for Jamari Harris. His first opportunity for points tonight. And he misses the first one. Second one is good. And that stops a 7-0 run for Diamond. Puts BP back up by 10. 30 to 22 minutes to go in the half. Silver with the pass off to Neal. Has some room. P might have been tipped on the pass. Pereira, quick three from the corner, no good. Perry with the put back. Tough rebound and a tough shot. But Perry with 10 points in the second. He's come alive here for Diamond in quarter number two. BP almost lost that ball. Donovan wants the three and he knocks it down. Another from Donovan who's up to 10. That's gonna be short. Poked away, Silver gets it back thanks to Pereira, that won't go. The rebound goes to Branco and BP takes it back. Wow, what a shot from Donovan. And BP. He's giving themselves some breathing room again now. Back up by more than 10, 13 points. After Diamond got it as close as nine. Perry with 10 points for Diamond in the quarter. Morris had 10 for BP in the first. Donovan up over 10 for the game. Multiple players in double figures. That's a long three and it's off the front. Alex DeCoste trying for the triple pointer. About a two second differential on the Shot clock, and a foul call against Branco. Yeah. 
Hmm. Fifth foul for the Craftsman. Two shots for Diamond. I'm, that's a tough foul for against against Branko too. It was his first. Bigelow will take two shots. Twenty two point two seconds on the clock. BP will look to rebound if it's a miss. Bigelow gets it to go. One for two. Bigelow in his first trip to the free throw line. BP with possession now. We'll try to add to their lead here at the end of the half. Ten seconds. Donovan with the ball. He's had a great first half. And he draws the foul. Diamond's fifth. And it'll be two shots. Second against Sakai Silver. Donovan's got all 12 of his points from the field. It's his first trip to the line here in the game. BP will, excuse me, Diamond will have 7.9 seconds. before the buzzer. Donovan, money from the line. And he'll check out for the final 7.9. They inbound to, uh, to Sakai Silver. Three seconds. Perry wants it. Off the mark, no good. Well, much better quarter there for Diamond but they gave some back at the end of the half there. They cut it to nine, but now down by 14 as they go into the locker rooms for halftime. 37-23 after two quarters here, and we're seeing some good shooting, uh, much better, as I said, in that second quarter than we had in the first quarter for Diamond. So that's good. Now they got to work on the defense and... Um, you know, try to try to hold BP down a bit when they come out of the locker room. We will be back with the third quarter right after this break, about nine minutes from now. Stay with us, more live coverage on Fred TV. I'm Alan McNamara, CEO of Main Street Projects. And I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira, Vice Chair of the Community Preservation Committee. The Bradford Derpy Textile College was a prominent training center for over a century. A critical resource that prepared thousands of young people and immigrants to gain employment. In 1899, the state invested approximately $75,000 to construct the Bradford Derpy Textile College, named after one of the city's leading industrialists. As technology evolved, so did the curriculum to include classes such as mechanical engineering. But after years of accumulating wealth, northern mill owners could not compete with mills in the south. Alan Macumber and members of the Community Preservation Committee envisioned a transformative project to stave off demolition. The Durfee Textile College is now a vital cornerstone of downtown revitalization. Each of the 55 lost style apartments are uniquely designed with a comfortable blend of errors. 11 of those 55 units meet affordable housing regulations set by the CPC Community Housing Fund. Members of the Historical Commission advocated for renovation over replacement. The 100,000 square foot building contains original flooring, brick walls, staircases, and doors. New construction replicates craftsmanship of 130 years earlier. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. I'm Mike Labossier, What's Upper Reservation Forester. And I'm Paul Furlan, the Administrator of Community Utilities. Protecting open space is a benefit today, and it's a gift to future generations. For over 150 years, Fall River has been a leader in environmental preservation. 
The southeastern Massachusetts Bioreserve ensures forests and fields remain undeveloped and accessible. The Community Preservation Act is a vital component to fulfill climate goals. Since 2017, CPA funds totaling nearly $1.3 million have been used to acquire conservation areas in Fall River. Educational programs within the Bioreserve connect families to nature and promote understanding and respect for diverse culture, history, and wildlife. Half of Fall River, about 12,000 acres, an area the size of Mattapoisa, is protected water and woodland. Healthy forests minimize flooding, reduce erosion, and provide habitat for endangered species. As the region expands manufacturing and technology, people are directly reliant on green infrastructure as an irreplaceable source of clean water and air. Miles of trails wind through unique landscapes which appeal to hikers, cross-country skiers, and mountain bikers. Specific areas are open for safe seasonal hunting. The Bioreserve promises endless discoveries and recreational experiences year-round. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Hi. 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 Hi, I'm Maggie O'Connell. I'm Julia Hargreaves. My name's Emma McDonald. I'm Julia Raposo. And we are the leaders of the Active Minds chapter here at Durfee. Active Minds is the nation's premier nonprofit organization supporting mental health awareness and education for young adults. They're a national leader for young adults' mental health, advocacy, and suicide prevention. Did you know one in five Americans suffer from mental health illness? One in five. As Active Mind leaders, we had the opportunity to attend a MIAA Sportsmanship Summit a couple months ago. We had the privilege to sit in on a workshop that was focused on mental health and were introduced to the Kyle Cares program, where the story of Kyle Johnson was shared with us. Kyle Johnson had a profound impact on many people in his 19 years. He had a passion for helping others and was driven with the motivation to make those around him happy. Kyle always put others before himself despite his own internal pain and struggles. His compassion made the world a better place. In Kyle's memory and in recognition of his legacy for caring for others, the Kyle Cares Foundation was created. Kyle Cares is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting open and honest communication about mental health challenges experienced by teens and young adults in today's society. Kyle Cares aims to eliminate student self-harm and suicide by creating school environments where students and their caregivers have the confidence to support and seek help without shame or hesitation. Why we want it here at Durfee. Having this Active Minds chapter here at Durfee is so important to us. We want to help change the culture around mental health at Durfee. No one should have to struggle alone. We believe it's never too late to start taking care of your mental health, and we want to help begin the conversation about it. We want to encourage those to seek help. We want to empower the individuals to talk about and open up about their mental health. We want to grow awareness to the resources available in our school. Hi, I'm Mr. Thoran, one of the adjustment counselors here at Durfee. As an adjustment counselor, I work with students to support their social and emotional needs, mental health being one of those areas. I am currently working with your Active Minds leaders to support students through this awareness campaign. Durfee High School School Adjustment Counselors also work to connect our school with mental health resources. If you or someone you know is struggling with their mental health or needs to talk, please contact me or see one of your grade level adjustment counselors. If you are unsure which office to go to, please contact me or one of your Active Mind student leaders who will inform me and I can guide you in the right direction. Overall, our mission is to create a change in the Durfee community so that mental health is openly discussed, cared for, and valued. If you are passionate about caring for others, mindful about mental health, are seeking help or resources, or want to become a part of a supportive, judge-free community at Durfee, become an ally of mental health and join our Active Minds chapter. Your mental health matters. We are here for you. We will listen to you. You are not alone. You matter! School Administration Building at 417 Rock Street 
was built over a hundred years ago by craftsmen from around the globe. And Mr. and Mrs. William Brennan, mill owners, raised their nine children in this statement home. Decades later, the property became too costly for a single family and was gifted to the Forever School District. Architects reconfigured the 22 rooms to accommodate administrative staff. By 2018, this historic structure was compromised, eliciting mold and water damage. Once dubbed the last big house on the hill, this extraordinary piece of architecture was in poor condition. Care was shown to restore artistic elements, including the circular railing and banister, chair rails, crown molding, antique and oak flooring, and the building is now handicap accessible. Roof work was the primary concern for the Brayton House. This new pitch surface directs water to a modernized drainage system. Ten years ago, four of our residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills to incentivize history, travel, diversity, and recreation. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Welcome back everybody inside Diamond. The Bengals trailing in this one by double figures. They cut it back to nine. Late in the second quarter, but unfortunately gave some of it back and uh, that's kind of where we stand now. So uh, the offense got back in gear a bit in the second, but um, the 20 to eight deficit that existed after one quarter. Uh, that was only a 12 point differential. Well, guess what? Now we're up to 14. So the Bengals need some shots and they need them quick. Well, they get the turnover. So that's a good start. And now Sayer Neal will try to put Bengals uh, offense here in play and in action. And now no shot, a travel called on Neal picking up the ball. Let's look at the scoring in the first half. Dante Morris had 10 points in the first quarter, 12 in the half. He really went off in that first quarter. Donovan went off with 10 of his own in the second quarter. He's got 14 for the game. It's number 12 for the Craftsman. That's a game high. And Sam Perry had 10 in the second quarter for Diamond. That's a team high, 10 total in the half. And there's Donovan trying to hook it, can't get it to go. So both sides trading possessions, which they come up empty here to begin the second half. And Perry knocks down a three. Now 13 for him, that's his third from distance. Going for Perry, bad pass to Jesus. Goes out of bounds. So again now, trading turnovers, both sides. Morris, it was tipped away. Nice job. The initial tip there by the Bengals. And Branco not able to corral it. It went out of bounds off of him. Neal gets the screen, takes the shot. It's short, batted away. Quick inbound to Neal. Back out to the corner to Silver. Perry calling for it. Lost it for a minute. Nice pass down to Anthony DeJesus. Timeout. 
to Jesus up to eight. And a quick five spot put up by the Bengals to start the second half. We were talking about BP's schedule earlier uh, for Diamond. They were supposed to play last Friday, but um, Case, they had to postpone that game. So, uh, but Diamond played yesterday right here. They had Avon. They lost that 48, uh, excuse me, 58 to 44. So two straight losses for the Bengals coming into this one. That's kind of why I said this is one of those games that you know, they really get at, to, at a point where they need to win. Uh, and that's it, point blank. They need to win their games coming up. BP tonight, they have Blue Hills on Thursday. They have the Case game being made up this week. So it's going to be four games this week. Uh, senior night next Wednesday, the 7th against Tri-County. Diamond beat Tri-County the first time, 62-52. Silver taking it back here. Chance for Diamond to keep the run going here. Neal pulls up. Won't get it to go. Good stretch, but Donovan comes away with it. Some contact there against Branco. I think he was looking for a foul. Diamond ball. That one going out of bounds again. Ooh, almost poked away there by Morris. To Jesus. Blind pass back to Neal. Tough pass there to Perry. Silver trying to get the rebound, cannot. He was kind of boxed out. Not fully, but enough. That was tipped. They find Isiku, and he gets it taken away from behind as Neil poked it away, and Neil puts it back off the glass. His first basket of the night. It's a seven-point game and a 7-0 run for Diamond to start the half. Branco with a nice fake. Beautiful take, and it falls off. It won't go. Craftsman will keep as it goes out off of Diamond on the rebound attempt. Isiku fouled on the three attempt. It's Neal's second foul tonight. First foul of the half for either side. And it's going to result in three shots for Gregory Isiku, who was three for four at the free throw line in the first half. First one misses. Second one good. Third one good, so two for three at the line. And it gives BP their first points of the second half after Diamond started the quarter on a seven nothing run. A lot of contact there too, similar to uh, Branco's take a couple possessions ago for the Craftsman in which he didn't get the foul called, so. Refs calling it both ways right now, or in this case, not calling it both ways. Poked away on two tough shots there put up by the Bengals. Donovan driving, no good. And very sloppy right there from the Bengals. That's a sure rebound with two guys there. And they give up possession. You just can't do that. 
and making a run to close the gap. Branko with the line for two. The foul was against Silver, his third. Both missing, and they were not close. Craftsman picking up their first foul. It is against Owen Hale, who just recently came into the game. Has not seen many minutes tonight. Foul was on the floor. So Bengals inbound. Cross to Perry, open three, and it's no good. Hasn't missed too many tonight. And now Pereira picking up his third foul, Diamond's third. A lot of whistles over the last couple seconds. Branco, tough shot, it's short, no good. Might have been deflected. He had good defensive pressure right there from to Jesus. That's a nice basket for Silver, his first points of the night. Bengals racking up the fouls now. Third foul against DeJesus. Fourth for the team with 2.53 to go. In danger of going into bonus. We're maxing out and putting uh, the Craftsman in bonus. That's no good from Morris. And a foul now against the Craftsman on the rebound. That's Isiku's third. And the second for the Craftsman. They're going to pull Isiku. Coach Plant going to put him on the bench, picking up his third. And Jamari Harris will come back in. Nine-point game. Silver, tons of time. Wants the corner three, and he gets it. Perry bats it away, but it ends up going right back into the hands. Donovan for three, no good. Bengals collide, rebound goes to the Craftsman, poked away from behind, but Branko keeps. That's no good, and taken away by Perry. They only gave Diamond two on that from uh, Silver. They did not give him three. His foot must have been on the line. Branko picking up his second foul. Third for the Craftsman. Two shots now for Silver. <laughs> Silver. Two for two in his first trip to the free throw line. Diamond has cut the lead to five. Two minutes to go in the third. Oh, that's a foul. And now it's call. That's Diamond's fifth foul. Should have been called before they even got to center court, honestly. Too much. Fourth foul for Silver. His second here in this quarter. And the... Craftsmen are shooting free throws now for the final 156. <laughs> Owen Hale at the line. As I mentioned, very limited time. Silver's going to take a seat now and give way to DeJesus, who comes back in. But Hale, very limited time in the game. That's his first point of the night. Misses the second. He'll get the rebound as it was tipped back to him. And two points now for Branco. It's a three-point swing on this end. And BP opens it back up to eight. Perry wanted three. Couldn't take the shot. Pereira stripped and fouled. 
He'll take two shots. First foul for Jamari Harris, who's been in off the bench a couple times for BP. And the first trip for Carter Pereira to the free throw line. He'll miss the first shot. Misses them both. Well, Diamond's going to get it back because it went out of bounds off of Branco on the rebound. Let's see if Diamond can convert it into points. Tough trip to the line there for Pereira. Sayer Neal almost lost it, gathers it back up, and it's foul. That's a late whistle. Well after the ball was shot. Well, both teams have maxed out. And it's Branco's third foul. He's picked up two here in the third. And now Sayer Neal will take two. He'll miss the first. Second one goes, but Diamond just one for four in those last free throw attempts. It's some precious points out there in a game that could come down to the wire. We've seen Diamond close the gap here in this third quarter. What you don't want to do is give the Craftsman extra points here. Ah! Perry went up. There was contact, but not a bad defensive play. Just a lot of fouls here in this third quarter. So it's going to put Harris at the line for two. He was one for two in the second quarter at the free throw line. He'll hit the first one there. Second shot misses. It was short. And now Harris will pick up a foul. He's got two this quarter. And we'll go down this end and pick, take free throws. Dias to the line. He missed on his only free throw of the game. It was on an and one. Second shot misses. One for two trip that time. They'll go to Donovan with a minute 10 to play in the third. Jumper is good. Donovan has been solid tonight. Quiet in the third. That's just his first basket and first points of the quarter. After 14 first half points. So Diamond has done a good job at keeping him quiet. Nice feed down low. Basket good. Put in by Campbell Morales. Donovan, no good. Might have been some contact there too. BP has shut down Sam Perry in this quarter as well. Two guys that made the most noise in the second quarter for each side. Been held pretty quiet here in the third. 15 seconds and Morris with the ball. Now down to 10. Diamond cut the lead here from 14 at the start of the third. That's a long three, and it's no good. Three seconds. Bengals are going to hold. Perry lets it fly. No good, but a really solid third quarter for Diamond. They got themselves back in this game. They were down by 14 to start the third. They've cut it to seven, holding BP to just 10 points and only two from the field. Two baskets from the field in that quarter. So that's, that's a big help as well. Yeah. 
Remember, folks, we live stream here on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Fred TV Sports. Don't miss a minute of the action. Click that like button right now so you can like and follow us. Everything gets archived to our YouTube channel under the same name. Stream it on your smart TV and watch from anywhere, anytime. No subscription needed. All right, fourth quarter here from the gym. If the third quarter is any indication, this could be uh, quite a finish here if Diamond can mount and finish the comeback. Down by seven as we begin the final eight minutes. Dias called on a foul on the back end of that. Diamond picks up their first right off the, right out of the shoot here. Donovan takes it and banks it home. See, those are the possessions that can change a game in a hurry. You cut it to seven. Diamond missed the basket and loses a foul to start the quarter. And then the Craftsmen take it right back. Now that's a great basket there from DeJesus who really had to work for it. Donovan full steam ahead. That one falls off the rim. Perry with the rebound. Contested, Branco can't take it away. Perry wrapped it up. Silver. Called on the travel. Taken away, Silver, soft touch, gets it to drop, back to five. Silver with a nice second half, eight points after nothing in the first half. Bengals with nine different players in the book for points. That's blocked, what a block by DeJesus. Silver to the basket. Can't get it to go, a lot of pressure. Craftsman bailing out, they go to Branco. That was rather easy. Everybody back down the other end. And now BP with another defensive play. Craftsman get the rebound. Diamond gonna draw the foul. I thought that was a travel, quite honestly. How many steps are we gonna give? Sick of hearing about the Euro step. Uh, Dias picking up his second foul. He's got them both here in this fourth quarter. BP will inbound. Donovan, three from the corner, short. Bengals can't get the rebound. <laughs> Coach Labrera, just as I say that, hey, let's get the rebound. Third foul for Diamond. Anthony DeJesus picking up his fourth. Diamond's third here in two minutes and five seconds. Isiku will hit the basket. His first one good. He's got six points off of free throws tonight. Plus a field goal. Seventh free throw made. Uh, seven for nine. This shows you how important free throws are right now. Diamond down by nine.
Coach Plant calling timeout. Well, while we have the timeout, let's. Uh, we showed you on Saturday uh, we had senior night hockey from Driscoll. Uh, some of the drone footage we got last week of the construction site. Is that wild or what? That's from about 300 to 350 feet in the air um, of the complex. Now looking straight north, we're right above where the varsity baseball field was. The road on your left kind of sneaking up is new. That's for the heavy equipment to get out. Um, just for perspective, right? So James T. Jim on your left, and now we're over the softball fields, and what was the softball fields, and making our way now to the end zone of what was the soccer and football field. Um, you know, the heavy equipment doing a lot of work. It's nice to see the, the construction we were talking about on, on Saturday during hockey. Um, you know, the groundbreaking happened in the fall. We covered that, of course. There have been construction crews on site, but they were not doing this level of work until they put the shovels in the ground. So this is, um, you know, great to see the progress as we come back out of the timeout. BP inbounds it cleanly. Uh, but great to see things happening here. You know, we, we documented it all at Durfee. You kidding me? Really? Well, that's going to be Silver's fifth. It's already Diamond's fourth. And things not looking good for the Bengals here in this fourth quarter. They lose one of their starters. And the deficit has increased. Uh, but yeah, having, you know, just documented a full construction of a new building and then the demolition of the old Durfee. Uh, fun to see it happening again here in the city and be able to document we'll have plenty more footage from from here drone footage and whatnot of this the building of the new diamond and then of course the deconstruction and demolition of this one so we're, we're excited excited for this community and for uh, the diamond students and staff who are going to get to experience it another turnover for the Bengals Hale set the play there. They went to Morris. Morris trying to get free. Now Isiku to the right. They go to Morris. He was trying to get open. He's at the top of the arc. And a travel against Isiku. That's Ian Campbell Morales. He came in after Silver fouled out. Silver with a nice second half. He got Diamond back in it with eight points and now a travel against Neal. He gets the bad news. Coach Labrera. Donovan breaking and he got there. Diamond left them uncovered, so another situation of points off of turnovers here. Donovan up to 20 points, game high, and the lead back to double digits for the Bengals, but that'll help Perry. Patience again, got the shot off, the basket counts, and he'll go to the line. Morris picking up his third foul. It's the Craftsman's first foul here in the fourth. Perry at the line tonight, two for four. Make it three for five in a quick three-point swing there for the Bengals, something they desperately needed after a couple sloppy minutes here in the middle of this fourth quarter. Rolling up on halfway through it. 4.09 left to play in the game. Remember, the first game was a two-point win for BP. That's going to go. And 
Diamond has maxed out on fouls. And now they've lost Anthony DeJesus who picks up his fifth. And one missed, the lead 10, and Diamond down two starters. Zaire Neal with the jumper. Here, Coach Plant saying, settle. You're up by eight. Don't force it if it's not there. That doesn't go. Big stretch from Neal as he boxed out Donovan for the rebound. In the paint, the drive, no good. Perry gets it back. And one! Donovan picks up his third foul, BP's second. Perry's patience under the net tonight has been exceptional. It's the third time he's done that. He's waited, then gotten the shot off, and he drew the foul. Back down to a five-point game, folks. Bengals need some tight but clean defense. That's a travel! Back court, they're saying it's deflected. It'll go out of bounds, and it'll be diamond ball. Good pressure right there from the Bengals. Now the official's gonna do... No craftsman's ball, right? Because of, of the deflection. Donovan breaking again, trying to get down low. They'll go to uh, Morris, who almost slipped. Donovan sitting in the near corner, left of the screen, off camera. That's stripped. And a foul. Morales picks up his second foul. Free throws for the Craftsman. Hale to the line, he's one for two. First one misses. Both miss, that's a break for Diamond. Now they gotta cash in on it. Need a basket, from the field preferably. Neal pulls up, drains it. The one possession game. Can Diamond come back after digging themselves a hole? Timeout. schedule here on uh, Fred TV. This week we have uh, one more broadcast. It'll be Friday from Durfee, as I said in our open. Uh, our first of two boys hoop schemes this week. Tonight we're here at Diamond. And on Friday we'll be back at Durfee. We'll see the Durfee Hilltoppers host Brockton. Durfee won that matchup on the road rather convincingly um, back on January 9th. It's going to be our first look at the Durfee boys since the New Bedford game on Tuesday the 16th. So we're going about three weeks or so uh, since we had, we've seen the Durfee boys. Um, so looking forward to that. We hope that you'll tune in on Friday. But we got some unfinished business here. Two and a half to play.
You know, the problem for Diamond is that they got in such early foul trouble, they have to be careful here. I mean, at some point you will play the game of fouls and force them to make two shots at the line, but you gotta be careful how you play defense because you don't want to get rung up. Diamond, again, already has lost two starters who have fouled out. Seven seconds. And a foul on Perry, I don't know for what. Actually calling it against Alexis Gonzalez. Not on Perry, which is interesting. Gonzalez was behind the play. And the miss from Hale. Hale's missed four straight free throws. That one is good. So it's a four point game. Perry for three. Yes, sir! It's a one point game. And Perry up over 20. Almost had the steal, and that's close to a foul. Morris, what a shot from Morris. It's like Perry got hit in the face. So the Bengals gonna lose Perry with 90 seconds to go. And a foul against Morris. And Perry quickly comes back in. Morris picks up his fourth. BP's third. Bengals ball. With uh, the shot clock at 35. Fresh shot clock here after the foul. Perry. To tie it, no good. Perry gets the rebound, kicks it out. That's no good. Gonzalez picking up his second foul. Again, Bengals at the limit. Isiku at the line, he's hit his last four free throws. And he'll miss the first. That's short, no good. The Craftsman just three for nine at the line here in the fourth. And Diamond will go into the timeout. Sayer Neal will inbound, they go to Gonzalez. Perry on the far side of the arc. Probably gonna be the go-to guy for three to try to tie it. Naturally, BP not gonna give him any space either. Back to Perry. Oh, we got the screen. It's blocked. That's a foul. I don't know why Morris is like, 
you know, thinking he can't, he can't believe he fouled. Took a blatant swat right at Bigelow and knocked him down. It's a foul. And he's done. Five fouls for Morris. And what was a good game for him. He went off in the first quarter. He really set the tone. He gave BP their lead. Bigelow hits the first. That one no good. Branco with the rebound. It's a two-point game. Under a minute to go. Bengals pressing here. Hale pulls up. Branco gives it to Donovan Neal. Now back to Hale. Bengals quick defensively. Good feed. Beautifully done. Excellent execution there. Isiku with the basket. Perry for the tie. It's long. Gonzalez tips it and it's out of play. BP with the ball. Diamond will have to foul. Donovan, I'm going to go to the line. He's only been there once tonight, and he hit both of them. Donovan sitting at 20 points. Fouls against Neal. Both sides, well, yeah, I'm sorry, BP with four. They have not maxed out. Craftsman got it to the right guy because Donovan has been money tonight. Almost every time he's had the ball in his hands, he's made the shot. He has been outstanding. And another timeout. As Coach Labrera will have the Bengals huddle up. 24.2 seconds left to play. Twenty seconds to play. Not a lot of time to also dribble around. Basket goes to cost. And another timeout. Bengals get a day off tomorrow. They have uh, Blue Hills on Thursday. On the road. Senior night next Wednesday from here at the gym against Tri-County. BP will travel to Shawsheen Valley tomorrow and then they'll have Case on Friday. A lot of steel, huh? Quick reach in. They went right to Donovan. DeCoste.
Picking up his first foul and more free throws for Donovan. Donovan hits them both, lead back to six again. Eight seconds, DeCoste will put up a three and it's no good. Perry kicks it out, BP gonna hang on and win this one, but what a finish. The Bengals showing some grit here. 20 points in the fourth, you know, it's unfortunate. They went on a great run in the first. In the first half but in the first quarter, they dug themselves a bit of a hole as BP went on a run to start the game, and that really, they never looked back. Um, but once again, another great matchup between these two teams. Uh, sil you know, similar to the first one, it ends up here, a little bigger deficit. The first one was uh, only a two-point game, 68-66. This one here, 66 to 60. As the Craftsmen sweep the Bengals here in the season series, a game Diamond really needed uh, as we get down to the final few games of this regular season, 2023-24. A tough loss for Diamond, but certainly uh, a much better performance, particularly, again, the second half of this game from what we saw last week against Upper Cape Cod Tech. You see why these two teams are considered to be good matchups against each other, uh, pretty evenly split. Well, folks, we will see you for more live basketball on Friday to wrap up the week as the Hilltoppers host the boxers from Brockton in conference play for themselves. Uh, Durfee also kind of in a similar situation. They are above uh, 500 um, going into that game, but you know, it's win one, lose one, win one, lose one. So they're, they're getting to a point where they need to win games as well uh, down the stretch. They were seated at 33rd coming into today. The MIAA came out with the rankings. So a uh, little preview for that one. Durfee hoping to sweep Brockton on the season and stay in the win column. Uh, until then, David Montero running camera tonight for us. Final score one last time from Diamond. The Craftsmen defeat the Bengals 66-60. to 60. Good night.